This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So if we go through and have a look at the types of entities that we are looking at throughout the syllabus so that we can then start to develop those financial and non-financial objectives. First of all, what we go through and consider are looking at two types of entity being your for-profit and not-for-profit entities. Okay, so for-profit entities, clearly the aim there is to make as much profit as possible. So thinking about the likes of Apple, uh, Coca-Cola, Mars, any of those businesses are, are all about making as much money as possible for the shareholders from the profits that are made. Okay, uh, not-for-profit entities, uh, essentially what they do there is they take your surplus revenue. So look at the revenues and the costs. Hopefully your revenues will be greater than your costs and that is then a surplus. But we don't talk about it as profit. Uh, it's a surplus of revenues. That surplus of revenues, instead of them being paid back to the owners of that not-for-profit business, that not-for-profit business then uses that surplus funds to fulfill its mission objectives. Okay, uh, And those mission objectives are usually some form of good cause okay so, so like a charity okay charities tend to be not-for-profit entities uh, they will go through generate a surplus of funds those funds will then be taken uh, and reinvested to help them meet the aims of that cause okay so prime example there would be the likes of say unicef uh, oxfam they are all not-for-profit entities you know their main focus is not necessarily to generate a surplus. It'd be good if they did, but that their main focus is more non-financial, isn't it? To ensure there that they're reducing child poverty uh, and helping out people in less developed parts of the world. Okay, uh, we've then got that. Then can be further split out in terms of then your incorporated and your unincorporated okay so that goes back way back to in the syllabus doesn't it you know your, your incorporated entities it is a company it is a separate entity that is owned by the shareholders that entity yeah that company uh has its own birth certificate at a company's house doesn't it okay uh unincorporated is there thinking about say a sole trader and a partnership and whether it's incorporated or unincorporated, we're still thinking there about making profit, aren't we? OK, making profit for the sole trader, the market stall owner, uh, making profit for the partnership. Well, that's Deloitte, PwC, KPMG, EY. Uh, and if it's incorporated, you know, making profit with regards to Apple, isn't it? Coca-Cola, their aim is to make as much profit as possible uh, and to pay out as much dividend to the shareholders. Uh, we can then go through, think about quoted and unquoted. So if you've got an incorporated business, uh, you will either be quoted, won't you, whereby your shares are listed on an active exchange, uh, or you are unquoted, whereby your shares are not listed on an active exchange. OK, uh, remember, if you're quoted, then you are much more uh, publicly accountable for your actions, aren't we? So therefore, when you're setting your financial and non-financial objectives, you need to be very cautious of what you are setting because you will be assessed against those objectives and if you don't meet those objectives then you know if you're quoted business that could have a direct impact in the future on your share price whereby for an unquoted company you're not as publicly accountable are we uh, because you're not listed on a stock exchange okay so when you're looking at the the financial and the non-financial objectives there's a little bit more leeway isn't a little bit more give and take than if you are quoted but again quoted unquoted the the, the main aim there is thinking about being profitable isn't it uh, we then go through and touch upon private sector and public sector uh, so private sector is owned by shareholders isn't it with a view for making profit uh, public sector it is very much going through there and thinking about it being a government-run entity, isn't it? In the hands of the public, okay? Uh, so in the UK here, uh, we have the National Health Service, okay? One of the the, the, the pride of, uh, of the UK in terms of how it's run and how it's operated in the past, even though it's trying to be destroyed by the current government. But let's not go there. That's just a little bit too political, isn't it? Okay? Uh, but that's a public sector entity, so it's not financed externally. It's financed by you and I, uh, the taxpayers, and the, the aim of that public sector entity is to go through there and provide a service back to you or I. So if I'm ill in the UK, that they will go through there and help me get better. OK, 
uh, and long may that continue, let's hope. Okay. Uh, so when you're thinking about the objectives, as we said, we've got financial objectives. So it mentions there, doesn't it? Uh, value for money. Uh, I think that's more of a say a non-financial objectives, but let's not worry about that. Uh, maximizing your shareholder wealth. Okay. And providing a surplus. Okay. Uh, you can look at the wealth that's created, uh, the amount of surplus in terms of the, the, the excess of revenues over costs. If you are a not-for-profit, in terms of shareholder wealth, you're looking at the share price uh, and maybe growth in dividends. So you can measure that numerically, can't we? Uh, Non-financial objectives, we're thinking there more along the lines of human, intellectual, natural and social and relationship factors. So there, in terms of human factors, we're thinking about customer service and, and how we go through there and provide that customer service and whether or not it is valued as a customer service. So Ryanair, a UK low cost airline, is very much focused on some non-financial objectives recently. Uh, it's much more focused now on customer service than when it operated previously. And again, that's had benefits elsewhere because more people are now flying with Ryanair previously and therefore that's increased the revenues, it's increased the profits and increased the share price. Okay, so it's remarkable how Focusing elsewhere on non-financial objectives can actually improve some of the financial objectives you set. Uh, intellectual, so that's going through there, thinking about your, your, your staff, isn't it? And, and trying to go through there and develop intellectual resources, uh, whether that's creating patents, okay, uh, or, or developing other types of intangible assets, uh, and just essentially by going through and creating opportunities for your employees. Uh, natural, it is thinking about uh, your carbon footprint and how we go through there and, and impact on the environment. Obviously, the airline businesses, Ryanair, uh, Qatar Airways, Etihad, you know, that they're thinking about their, their impact on the environment. So therefore, they will have non-financial objectives in terms of reducing their emissions. OK, uh, maybe by getting planes that, that have more fuel efficient engines. Again, that helps the, the natural non-financial objectives, but also improves the cost in the business, doesn't it? Because it's cheaper to operate. And then social and relationship non-financial objectives. You're thinking there maybe about your charitable donations and how you interact with the local community. OK, are there any schemes that you're running to try and encourage children within local schools uh, to find jobs or, or to go through there and offer them some form of skills or, or courses that they can attend that are linked to your entity? OK. Uh, we then go through there, don't we, and talk about what we have in terms of what the focus is on in the UK and the US, uh, you know, the, the heavyweight, if you like, in terms of the global economy, ignoring them. You know, some of the emerging economies like India and China, obviously. Uh, you know, the, the, the key bit there is that the, the focus is on the shareholders, isn't it, all the time. Uh, and the focus with your shareholders is looking at the level of risk compared to the level of return in that if you take on board more risk, the shareholders will want more return. OK, that's one of the key aspects that we need to go through there and think about with regards to your shareholders. If there's an increased level of risk, then we need an increased level of return. OK, uh, however, just be careful. Uh, we need to make sure as well that we start to go through and balance up the needs of the stakeholders as well. OK, so that's one of the big issues that you've got with regards to Heathrow Airport in that, yes, we want to expand the airport, make another runway, but we need to balance that up with the needs of the local community uh, and what the government wants and, and how that all pieces together. So when we make some of our decisions, what we may hear of terminology is that we're, we're, we're satisficing, we're satisficing everybody's need, which is very difficult to go through there and achieve, okay? Uh, just be aware in other countries, it mentions there, does it mainland Europe, Japan? Uh, the focus there is much more on maximizing corporate wealth. So not just shareholder wealth, but corporate wealth, which tries to encompass more than just an increase in share price and dividends and starts to think along technical and innovation. Uh, is there anything that we're doing to develop human resources? And is there anything there that we're doing overall to go through and try and impact the market? Okay. So let's go through, take what we've looked at so far. In fact, no, I'm not going to talk our way through it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to stop the video. I'm going to get you to think about things, okay? And what I'd like you to do is just like you to do those next two examples. You've got the example number one, all about your financial objectives, and example number two, all about profit and non-profit organisations. Stop the video, have a go. When you've answered them, come back 
and I'll talk my way through them with you. See you in a minute.